Mel Kuyper mock draft coming up here on the Raiders Sport. I'm Mitchell Renz from Chat Sports. And what we're going to be rolling through today is the first Mel Kuyper mock draft of the offseason. I'm going to tell you who the Raiders picked at 13. I'm going to give you the grade on the overall pick there. And then I figured, you know what, for better context, I'm going to tell you what Mel's top 25 prospects are entering the 2024 NFL Draft. Now that the Raiders have hired Antonio Pierce, now that the Raiders have hired Tom Telesco to be their GM, guess what? Now the concentration goes to free agency. Now the conversation goes to the draft. If you want more draft videos around the silver and black, hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free. And you know what? I'll make you a deal. I'm going to give you guys free videos every single day this year for the next 366 days. If that sounds good to you, make sure you're subscribed. All right, let's go to Mel Kuyper's mock draft right now. Coming off the board here at number one, it's going to be Caleb Williams, quarterback from USC, going to the Bears via the Carolina Panthers. At number two, the Commanders, they're going to also go quarterback Jaden Daniels out of LSU. At number three, it's the New England Patriots. And guess what? Another quarterback off the board. This time, it is Drake May, quarterback from North Carolina. I have set up here on the show before, and I have screamed. I have yelled. I said, hey, I want the Raiders to trade up into the top three to get Williams, Daniels, or Drake May. However, I can sit up here and I can say that all I want, and I would say right now that there is a 75% chance that Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May are taken in the top three picks of the 2024 NFL Draft. And because I think that it is the utmost importance for Telesco and Pierce to sit down, have that conversation, you got to try to trade into the top three before the NFL Draft. Because what you can have is a plan that revolves around the idea of getting a top quarterback. You pass on all the QBs and free agency. I'm talking Justin Fields, Kirk Cousins, Russell Wilson, whoever trades. You have your heart set on a top QB, and then you miss. Because if you miss, that is a disastrous start for Telesco and for AP. So what do you think, y'all? Yes or no? Should the Raiders trade up into the top three before the draft? To me, the answer to that is yes. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm going to try every though, everything in my power to make sure that it does happen. I'm calling Chicago twice a day, three times on Sunday. I'm calling the Commanders. I'm calling New England. What does it cost? How do I have to sweeten the deal? And if it requires a player like Devontae Adams in order to do it, I'm willing to do it. The only player that I will not trade to get into the top three is Max Crosby. That is how I feel about this deal. So yes or no, should the Raiders do it? Yes. You cannot afford to not get a star quarterback. And doesn't mean that teams are going to be willing to do it, but you got to find somebody that can compete with Patrick Mahomes. The Chiefs have made six straight AFC championships. Makes me sick to my stomach. You need to be able to find somebody that can compete with a Lamar Jackson. Got, got to find somebody that can compete with somebody like a Josh Allen. Aiden O'Connell ain't that guy. You need a difference maker at quarterback in today's NFL. And to me, trading up into the top three is how you do it. All right, so we got Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May off the board. Coming here at number four, first wide receiver. It's going to be Marvin Harrison Jr., the best receiver in this year's class out of Ohio State. At number five, the best tight end, Brock Bowers from Georgia. For number six in the New York Giants, they're going to go with Malik Neighbors. The receiver out of LSU. Got tons and tons of talent there. At seven, it's Joe Alt. And I said it before when I was live on this show. If Alt somehow finds a way to slide down to 13, I am willing to bet a lot of money that that's going to be the person the Raiders end up taking because Telesco loves Notre Dame guys. At eight, it's Dallas Turner, the edge rusher from Alabama. The Bears, their second pick here. They're going to go with Rome Adunze, receiver from Washington. The New York Jets standing there at number 10. They're going to go with Olu. They'll try to protect Aaron Rodgers. I think is a very smart decision. One of the best offensive tackles in this year's class. At 11 is my number one corner. It's Nate Wiggins out of Clemson. To me, he's the best overall coverage corner. At 12, I can't really pronounce his name. It's Latu, edge rusher from UCLA. To me, he gives me a lot of like Jalen Phillips type of vibes. Really, really good edge rusher. Has tons and tons of talent to be able to boot with that. But to me, if you're looking for a good edge, I do like him quite a bit. Which now means this. Who are the Raiders going to pick in Mel Kuyper's first mock draft of the season? Well, guess what? I'm going to tell you who they're going to end up picking. But first, I got to tell you about our awesome sponsor here. Game Time. And Game Time is a company that I have used. It's an app that I've used for many, many years, way before they were sponsored on the show, because 
you can get awesome ticket deals. And for me in the business that I work in, I don't want to plan something months in advance and then, well, guess what? The Raiders hire a GM and then I can't go to the event. So what do I do? I wait for the last minute. I get my tickets at the very last minute, lowest price guaranteed. If anybody out there wants to go get started, you can download the Game Time app, $20 off with code Raiders Chat. And if you've been listening to the show, you guys will know that Chugs and I, we're going to be out in Las Vegas for the big game. So we might stop by and get some Vegas Golden Knight tickets. Maybe we go in... Check out, I don't know, events under 50 bucks. I want to go to Tom Zagira. He's going to be out there. But here's the thing. If you do plan on going to the big game, I want you to listen up. Use promo code VEGAS100 to get $100 off a purchase of a ticket to the big game. And it's valid for the big game. This offer is available to all users, not just new users. And think about what you can do with an extra 100 bucks. Like you can get some extra beers. You can even bang a little bit here on the Raiders port. And again, it's going to look like this, code Vegas100. Jeremy and I were literally just talking about it before we were on the show. It was like, all right, if we had saved 100 bucks, could we go to watch Tom Zagira? Could we go watch another event under 50 bucks? Like One thing that him and I really, really were trying to do, I, would, I really want to go to a, a Las Vegas Knights game. Like That would be sick to be able to do that. So bottom line is this. I think you can create really awesome memories with game time because you're not going to remember the score probably 10, 20 years from now. But you know what I do remember? I can remember my first ever baseball game I ever went to my dad, Sammy Sosa hit home run. Like that's something to me that I don't care what you tell me that price of that ticket was, that's going to stay with me for the rest of my life. And to me, game time not only creates awesome, awesome events for you guys to go to, they also have those lasting memories. So it's going to last a long time. One more time, download the game time app, $20 off with code Raiders Chat, and if you plan on going to the big game, use code Vegas100 to get $100 off a purchase of a ticket to the big game. All right, here we go. The Las Vegas Raiders and Mel Kuyper's mock draft. They are going to select cornerback Terrian Arnold from Alabama. He is six foot, 196 pounds at 63 tackles last season for the Crimson Tide, five interceptions and 12 pass breakups. Mitch, why did the Raiders go with Terry and Arnold? Well, this is what Kuiper had to say. This was another spot in which I thought about slotting in the fourth quarterback in this class as the Raiders are likely to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo this offseason. They will. And from a rookie fourth-round pick, Aiden O'Connell struggled after some early flashes. Ultimately, this might be Las Vegas' best chance to get a true number one cover corner, though, as Arnold took his game to another level in 2023. He picked off five passes, had 12 total breakups, as quarterbacks completed just 37.9% of their passes when he was the nearest defender in coverage. He had shut down on one side of the field for a defense that improved down the stretch, but still has ways to go and to compete in a tough AFC West. When I think about Terry and Arnold and his overall scouting report for the notes that I have, he has the body, he has the athletic ability. He's long, he's lanky, he's got good speed. I think he's going to run somewhere around like a 4-4-5, four, four, probably 40-yard dash. But he can be a true outside cornerback one in the National Football League. I will admit, I like guys when they get better and better and better, and Arnold did get better and better and better, especially from the time that he first stepped on the field with Nick Saban to now where he is. He is a man coverage corner. Like If the Raiders are smart and the Raiders with Patrick Graham usually run a lot more man than they do zone, he's going to have more success. If you let Arnold be a man corner, he's going to be a really freaking good corner. If you want him to play more zone, you're not going to like the pick here in the first round. His versatility is something that I love. It's something that I think would fit great in a Patrick Graham scheme because there are some scouts that say he could potentially play safety because that's how good of an athlete he is. If you want my like off-the-top Raiders comp, he reminds me of Nate Hobbs, a dude that is a athletic specimen that's got the length that you look for, that has the physicality, and he's not afraid to tackle. Terry and Arnold reminds me of Nate Hobbs. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but that's who he reminds me of. So how about this? It's time to get your red pens out here. I want you to grade the pick of Terry and Arnold to the Raiders at number 13, A, B, C, D, or F. A, and the way that I want you all to do this show is I want you to be tough graders, right? Like, a is it's an excellent pick, slam dunk. B, it's a good pick. C, it's an average pick. D, it's bad. F, it's an absolute fail. For me personally, when I think about this, if I'm live on draft night, which guess what? Chugs and I were going to be live, so make sure you're subscribed. And if it's announced the Las Vegas Raiders are pick 13 in the 2024 NFL draft, they select Terry and Arnold, I'm going to give this a C grade. It would be an average pick to me. 
He is the third best corner in this year's class. And I get it, you don't have Wiggins. I also am a bigger fan of Kool-Aid McKinstry, who played opposite of Terry and Arnold. And to me, it's really going to determine where exactly they end up falling. I do think he would be a good fit in Patrick Graham's system. But again, I want him to be physical. I want him to run around with confidence and swagger. And I will say, like, this would be a high upside pick in my book because if you have AP and you allow corners to carry that swagger, like, think about where Jack Jones was where he is now. Think about Nate Hobbs, like a lot of these players. I want that swagger. On top of that, though, if you got a secondary, that's Nate Hobbs, Jack Jones, Trevon Merrick, Marcus Epps, and then you add Terry and Arnold to that, that is a really talented uh, secondary and defenses are not going to have a lot of ability to be able to throw. The reason why, though, I am going to give it a C is because what I think that the Raiders should do for this year's draft is go best player available. Like, you got to try to figure out how to build this roster out, and based off where this team is, it's best player available. And if the draft were to actually happen, Arnold will not be a top 13 prospect in my book. In fact, He's not a top 13 prospect in Mel Kuyper's big board. So to me, it's a good player. It's a good player. I think it's a good fit. It's a C, but it is a bit of a reach for me. And because of that, it's not the route that I would go. I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't love it. It's a C grade. So coming up here is going to be Mel Kuyper Jr.'s big board. I'm going to go through his top 25 prospects in the 2024 NFL draft. If you guys are going to be out in Las Vegas, who's going to be out in Las Vegas? If you are, guess what? Chugs and I, we're going to be live in Vegas. Super Bowl 58 watch party. Just hope it's not the Niners and the Chiefs. If it is, guess what? We're still going to be rooting against both those teams as far as I'm concerned. We're going to be in the Ahern Luxury Boutique Hotel. Here is the address if you want to give them a call and say, hey, what's the latest here on our Raiders Report Super Bowl 58 watch party? Give them a call. Tell them that you want to reserve a spot. When is it going to be? Sunday, February 11th at 2 p.m. Pacific time. The plan is when the doors open, it will be first come, first serve. From what I understand, there's 100 spots. So if you want to make sure that you're there, make sure that you get here on time. If you're wondering, Mitch, what does the hotel itself look like? This is what it looks like from the outside. And I know, like some of y'all are probably sitting around being like, oh, if I go, is it kid-friendly? Yes, it's kid-friendly. I had somebody DM me on IG at MitchellRents365 asking, can I bring my kid? As far as I'm concerned, you can bring your kid. The way I would frame it is, do you let your kid watch the Raiders report? If the answer to that is yes, then bring him to the event. If the answer to that is no, then I'd probably say don't bring him to the event. But this is what it looks like. They have a full, long bar inside. Chugs and I will be on the... Podium there, you're going to be seeing the game. You're going to also see the Raiders report. But I want this thing to be interactive. We're going to have special food and drink deals where you guys are going to get some awesome food, but you're also going to have opportunities to do some beer bongs, take some shots with us, and you know join the show. Like Literally, like you're going to be standing right here doing a beer bong next to Jeremy Chuggs. You might lose, probably going to lose, but that's how it's going to go. We're going to have special giveaway items. I'm talking jerseys, footballs. Uh, there's going to be, from what I understand, Raiders players are going to be in attendance. Like We're going to have tons and tons of deals, deals going down, so if Think about this. Do you have plans for the Super Bowl? If the answer to that is no, pull up to Ahern Luxury Boutique Hotel in Las Vegas on Super Bowl Sunday. I can't freaking wait. It's going to be a big thing. And if you are a supporter of the show, if this goes well, I'm being honest with you, if this goes well, there's an opportunity where Jeremy and I can be out in Las Vegas every single game next season. Like, I want to do this every single game next year. And if it happens... We're going to be able to take the Raiders sport to a whole new level, which I'm telling you right now is going to be able to take this show to a whole new level, which also means the stuff that we do goes to a whole new level. All right, y'all, coming up here is going to be Mel Kuyper Jr.'s big board. We're going to run through his top 25 prospects. And the reason why I'm giving Terry and Arnold a C grade is because guess what? Darren and Arnold's not even a top 25 prospect on the board for Mel. So that means the Raiders essentially took a player not in his top 25. If you're like, Mitch... Give me the rundown. Here we go. Here's Kuyper's big board. His top five prospects. Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Rome Adunze. I have no disagreement at all in the top four. Then you go from six to ten. I think Joe Wall honestly deserves to be a little bit higher. I think he's a standout offensive tackle. Going to be an absolute stud. Brock Bowers, one of the best tight end prospects we've seen in quite some time. Alu from Penn State, the offensive tackle, hell of a player. Dallas Turner, the outside linebacker from Alabama. These top 10 are pretty solid. From 11 to 15, Brian Thompson Jr., I do disagree on this a little bit. Coop, he is rising fast. Don't get me wrong. I just don't have him this high. Cooper DeJean, he has him as his number one corner. 
He's my number, I want to say, four corner on my big board. Keon Coleman, hey, I can't wait to see what he does at the combine. His stock might really go up. He's an absolute freak of nature, like 6'5", hell of a receiver. Nate Wiggins is my personal number one corner here. Uh, Troy, the offensive guard from Washington, to me, he might be the highest guy on him. Latu Latu, he is the outside linebacker edge rusher here from UCLA. Michael Penix Jr. is going to roll in here at 17. That's a little bit too rich for my blood. Jared Verse is literally from my hometown, and I know a lot of people very close to Jared. If you like a good, feel-good story, somebody that had to work for everything that he's had, he's a, he's a hell of a player. I'm telling you, he's going to be special. He, he gives me vibes of people are not going to look at him seriously, and then he's going to show out, and he's going to be a hell of a player. Tali Fugai, I believe I pronounced that right, the offensive tackle from Oregon State. J.C. Latham, the offensive tackle from Alabama, rolling here at number 20. The defensive tackle from Texas, which I do like Sweat. I'm actually surprised that he's in Mel's top 25. I recently got him in a mock draft in round two. Mims, the offensive tackle from Georgia. Tyler Guyton, yeah, <laughs> you're not wrong. Jerzon Newton, the top defensive tackle here in this class at 24. And then Jordan Morgan, he looked like he was uh, hitting that 420 like button. I don't know, out of uh, Arizona. Bottom line is that's Mel Kuyper's big board. So here in conclusion is where I'm going to wrap this up. Kuyper is the Raiders picking a corner, not in his top 25 prospects. Don't love it, but I do like the fit of Arnold with Patrick Graham with this Raiders defense, and I think he's going to bring that Raiders swagger. Like I, I think when you watch the tape, Arnold's got some like Jack Jones, Nate Hobbs swagger to him. He is the third best corner in this year's class, according to me. That's just my opinion. And then the Raiders reached in Mel's draft. They didn't go best player available, which I would have rather the Raiders have done in this here mock draft.